Okay, welcome to another uh, live recording. This is going to be a demonstration um, using Procreate to create a landscape. Today the landscape is um, McQuay Rocks at Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park in Big Sur, or Big Sur State Park, uh, along the Pacific Coast Highway in California. So here's the, the app I'm using. It's called Procreate, and uh, let's go out of that into um, the actual use of the, the program. Oh, so here's my, my gallery I have so far. Um, I have a lot of artwork I've done, and uh, some landscapes, some portraits, and a lot of um, illustrations for children's books you might see. So today we're doing a landscape. So we're going to uh, first pick the canvas, and I'm going to go for a large canvas, uh, 27 by 21. Always takes me a while to find it. Here we go. All right, and obviously I want to make it landscape format and not portrait format, so I have to turn it like that. Okay. So I'm using uh, an, an iPad and an Apple Pencil. And let's begin. So the first thing I want to do is get the reference photo that I'm going to be painting from. And to do that, um, I click the Canvas button and then the Reference button, and you'll see this little box come up. And we're going to import the image that I'm going to use. And here it is. This is the image um, that I want to paint from. If you were doing this live, like plain air painting, you could do the same thing outdoors. Um, I've done it a couple of times. I've done it a lot with traditional paint, but um, with the digital, uh, maybe twice, maybe three times, actually. I think I went out a couple times, three times and did it. Okay, so let's use this picture. I got this picture off the internet, by the way. It's, uh, it's a place I hope to see in person one day, but so far I have not. All right, so the first thing I want to do is open the layers. You see there are, there's, there's the background color, which I'm going to change, and layer one, which has nothing on it yet. So let's change the background color first. What I want to do is, um, I think I want to make it um, like a grayish, like that right there, and just to just to give it some, so that the light colors can be seen. I want to show you a kind of a trick to get started, a technique. If you were um, using traditional paint, you might want to paint a, a, a first layer um, that is complementary to the colors that the second that the rest of the painting will have. Okay, by complementary I mean the opposite. So let me give you an example. So let's open up the color palette. Now here's the one I like to use. It's called Classic and um, here's the disc one. The disc one is good because I actually use the, the Classic one mostly. But for this I just want to show you how to get complementary colors very, 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 very easily um, with the color wheel. So first what I want to do is get the brush that I want to use. It's going to be the turpentine brush. You see there are many brushes here. The oil paint brush, the stucco brush, the f fresco, the watercolor, and the dry brush, the old brush. They're, they're all useful for different things and, and for the same thing. Sometimes you, you might just want to do a painting with one over the other. There's so many choices on Procreate, so um, don't be stuck with just one. This painting, however, I'm probably only going to use the turpentine brush. So let's start with that. Now, the first thing I want to do is the complementary colors. Um, some of the old masters would use complementary colors as, a, as an under painting. Um, sometimes they would do one big brush stroke, uh, not big brush stroke, but the whole canvas would be covered with a complementary-ish color, because it's not going to be completely... But since this is digital and we can do this kind of quickly, let's let's do this. So we'll look at this. You, you, if you touch and hold your finger down, you see that circle? Watch the top half of the circle as I move it around. It is picking up the colors 
underneath the reference photo. Now, I don't want to do this when I'm actually painting the, the picture, although you can. Um, you know what? Maybe I will. I think I will. I'm going to show you how to do that. But what I want to do now is I'm going to grab that color. Okay, now let's see where that is on the wheel. It is right there. That's it. It's that plus that equals the color of the sky over there. Now, directly across from that is this color. So let's take that color. Let's make the brush big. Let's make it opaque. This changes the size. Oops, you can't see it. Let me see. This changes the size of the brush. Okay. And this changes the opacity of the brush. So let's keep it 100% opaque and keep it kind of big. So we're using the opposite color, the complementary color of that blue sky. And we're just going to grab it and bring it across and do it in a painterly way so that you're leaving brush strokes okay that's what we want to do now let's take the ocean color this is just one tap here it is the opposite is up here okay now let's go ahead and paint in this now that does not look like an ocean right it's kind of brown um, so this is what i want to show you it's a very cool way to um, to do a painting. Uh, it's not original by me. It's a, a technique that's been used by many, many artists. And um, it might have a name. I don't know. And you don't have to be perfect with this. As you, as you can tell, I'm really just really roughing it in. Okay. Now here, the, the background mountains. Let's get that color. And... Oops, and there it is right there. The opposite is up there. So let's put that over here for these background mountains. Okay, those are the, the ones in the distance. And I kind of want to show you something about the distance later. Uh, and now this is the, the foreground stuff, the greenery, the, the trees, etc. And here it is uh, right there. And now the opposite is right here. It's kind of a violet. So we're going to, well, it's a very dark violet, okay. So we're going to just kind of sketch that in, rough it in, bring it up here. I'm not so worried about that white beach down there. I'm not so worried about everything being perfectly, exactly complementary or opposite. It's just a rough idea of something that is opposite of what we want to paint and we want to cover the canvas. Okay, now, can you see already that this looks like that, but almost like a negative of it? You know, it's kind of almost like a negative. All right, keep it painterly, keep it brush strokey. <laughs> and, uh, and if you put your finger on the painting itself, you'll, you'll do the same thing. You'll grab the color just like you could over at the reference photo. But let's just grab that a second, just because I want to make the horizon a little straighter. Okay, now, that whole thing, everything we just did is this layer. It's one layer. Let's add a layer, and now we're going to paint over it. Okay, now check this out. We're going to grab the color. Now, there's more than one way to do this. Let me see if I can show you. A, the, 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 we're going to use this technique, but I want to show you a different technique. Go to the color. Uh, and you can use this one or you can use this one. I prefer this one. Now, the color is, is blue and you want to just kind of figure out, if you were using real paint, you would mix the paint um, so that it was the color you wanted it to be. By the way, some of this I'm going to change just to make it more dramatic. But right now, let's just take that color that we grabbed off of that area and let's just paint in that sky. It's a very undramatic sky in this particular picture so we might want to add a few clouds so and, and the one thing i don't want to do is i don't want the painting to look like a photograph we have cameras for that you know back before cameras were invented it was important i think for artists to try to capture things so that they looked very much like what would eventually become a photograph did I say that right? 
yeah, the artists tried to make um, paintings look like photographs, even though photographs hadn't been invented yet. I'm not really happy with that sky. I, I would like it to be a little bit darker at the top and maybe a little lighter on the bottom, and I'm going to throw some clouds in there. So let's go back to the, uh, the palette. Bring a little over here so it's a little darker. Okay, you see? And now let's just paint up here. Let's lower the opacity. Okay? So that's not so opaque. Oh, that's a little bit too thin. Okay. There. Let's poke it in there. Make it a little darker. And that might be a little too dark. That almost looks stormy, doesn't it? But that's okay. Okay. And now let's make the, the, the horizon a little bit brighter. A little bit, a little bit less. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now that looks a little bit like there might be some, some distant fog or some distant mist. Or maybe even the, the, the smog from the L.A. area. This, this area is about 275 miles north of L.A., so I don't know if that would be true. But All right, how's that look? Now, now let's add a few clouds. Just, just grab some white. Here's some white. Just kind of put them in there. Okay. There we go. Just a few. Nothing, nothing dramatic. Just a little bit of character to the sky. <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to take that layer that layer has only the sky on it I want to d double it, duplicate it okay it made it a little bit richer see, can you tell so now I'm going to combine the two merge them together <clears throat> and there's the sky there's the sky layer. We will probably be changing that as we get through this, but I want to show you there it is on, there it is off. And let's see what happens when I turn off the underneath layer. Well, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot because I made it pretty opaque. So, but that's okay. Some of this will shine through, will bleed through. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. All right, now what I want to do is I want to create the ocean. The ocean has a really pretty straight edge, but you can see it's a blurry straight edge. Okay, in the in the reference photo. So what I want to do is I want to get the color of the ocean. And uh, so now, so now what I want to do is again, there's two ways you can go here with three ways actually. You can go here and you can get a darker blue. And you want to do this on a separate layer, which it's set for that. Okay. So then we want to make this opaque again. And start brushing in the ocean. I'm going to show you a trick on how to make that, that horizon straight. Okay. Now, obviously, the ocean is not all one color. We're not making a coloring book here. <laughs> and you, you could use a big brush stroke or you could use little strokes. I'm using, I would guess you would say medium strokes. Again, the reason for that is to keep it painterly, to look like um, paint strokes on a, on a canvas. Okay. So there's how you would do that. I'm not... So you see the horizon is not really straight yet. I'm going to show you how to fix that. But I told you there was more than one way to get the color. So that was one way. Here's the one I showed you earlier. You can grab this. Let's take this color here by the, by the little uh, inlet right there. You see it's kind of a, a bluish green. Now you grabbed it from there. You can paint it on here. You see? Can you see it's looking more bluish? Blue-greenish? Where the, where the water is maybe not as deep. Okay. You just pull it out and, and paint it. And, and uh, we haven't put those rocks in there yet. We're going to do that. That's, after all, what it's called McKay rocks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Excuse me while I grunt. 
All right, now what I want to do, um, what did I want to show you? Oh, I wanted to show you another way to make this palette. Okay, this is kind of a cool way. I never use it, so give me a second to, to figure it out. Um, here's the palette button. Okay. Now. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to, oh, here. Okay, create a new palette. Uh, from a from a photo new a new palette from a photo so we're going to get a palette from this photo okay so i just did that did you see what happened right there that palette those colors the ipad or the procreate app figured out that those colors are in this um reference photo so what you can do is you can say, well, this must be the sky, for example. And then you take that color and you put it in the sky, you see? And that, that is sort of what it is. It is that color. And there you go. And you can say, well, now which color looks like the ocean? Well, it looks like this might be the ocean. And you can play with these colors and do it that way. You can also just eyeball it, which is what I usually do. Um, just go to the regular palette and just kind of look for colors. Look for the colors you think are there. Um, for example, this color here is a very, very, very rich, dark, dark green. And so I'm going to grab it from there. And let's make sure I'm still on the right layer. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good because it's the, it's the same layer as the, as the ocean. So we're going to paint this in here. Just to, just to rough it in. Okay. And this is the beauty of the, the under layer is that it does come through. We don't want to completely cover it. I did with the sky. I probably shouldn't have, but I did. And uh, it's all right. It'll work. It'll work. And then we want to take that, that background color for that... Uh, a distant mountain and we want to put that in here you can see it's very very f faded looking um, okay okay now what I'm noticing that I did um, it's not exactly like the picture so two thoughts on that one it doesn't have to be if you're doing a portrait um, somebody's face yes everything has to be right um, but when you're doing a landscape it's one of the beauties of doing a landscape it doesn't have to be perfect um, as perfect as you want it to be you could in essence take this picture here and call it done it would be very very impressionistic but that's not, that's never good enough for me I have to have it better than that um, but you could you could do that all right, let's go ahead and, and figure out how to get this uh, this little bit of a beach in here. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. Okay, we got to remember I'm going to I'm going to put these rocks on a different layer because I want to put the ocean under it. But just put some some light spots here for to represent those areas. Um, some of this gray area here, we'll put in there. Some of this light green. Put over here some of the very dark dark green these areas of shadows <coughs> okay grab these these are trees in the in the in the foreground here okay so you can see it's starting to look like um the reference photo a little bit okay I, just grabbing some of these colors. Um, go back to the distant water and put some of that in there. To, to the mid-ground water, I guess, you might say. Okay. 
<clears throat> um, I think I might have made a mistake here. Yeah, I sure did. Okay, well, I was going to show you how to, to make the, the horizon straight. I'm going to have to show you a different way of doing it. Um, I was going to... I'll, t I'll show you what I was going to do. Oh, maybe I can still do it. Let me make another layer. Okay, let me make another layer. Let me grab this color from the distant water. And on this new layer, all I want to do is, is, is do this. Just, just paint in the horizon. Yeah. In fact, the horizon probably needs to be a little bit higher anyway. The edge of the water. Yeah, it probably needs to be up there anyway. I probably had it too low. All right, now what you do, all you have on that layer is just that little strip. I don't know if you can see it in there. So when I tap away from the box, by the way, that's what turns it off. All right, so now you hit this. That selects it. And watch this. I can move. I can move that layer. So I'm going to move it up to the top because the top is a straight line. Now I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. And look what happens. It left a perfectly straight line. So now I'm gonna bring that down and put it right there so that I have a straight horizon, even though it's a little bit blurry in the reference photo. There is a way to fix that, by the way. But now what I want to do is take that new layer I just made and I want to add it to the layer underneath it. So I'm going to click on that and it opens up this menu. There are many choices here. The one I want is Merge Down. So now that becomes part of this. It's all one now, see? I can turn it on and off. Okay, so there's there's our ocean. Now let's let's talk about the the blurry edge as opposed to the clean, razor-sharp edge we have here. Let's make that blurry. First, let's duplicate the layer, so in case we make a mistake, we can undo it. Wait a minute, what is this layer here? Oh, that's the sky, okay. We don't want to mess with that. We want to mess with this one. So let's duplicate this, so in case we mess it up, we still have a, a safety. Turn off the bottom one, and now we have the top one on. Over here, you have um, th the adjustments, okay? And one of the adjustments is called Gaussian Blur, okay? Now, Gaussian Blur, watch this. You can blur the whole layer, or you can use your pencil to blur specific areas. Let's do that. Ah, now, let's turn off our reference photo for a second so that we can make the picture large. Okay, let's, in fact, let's bring the horizon very large. Now what we want to do is we want to blur the horizon. When you just brush it in there, you see what happens? It starts to, starts to blur it. It starts to put it a little bit out of focus the more you do it. And if you want to adjust the focus, by the way, you can do it with this, you see? See how it gets worse or, or more increased? In fact, I like it like that. That looks good. Okay, so we're not moving the pixels, so we're not changing the straightness of it. We're just changing how focused it is. So we're making it blurry. We're using the pencil to blur it. I think we make it a little bit more blurry than that. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? Now let's turn that off. And now compare that with the layer underneath it. And you see how straight and sharp that is and how blurry that is. And that's the one we want. So now we can get rid of that bottom layer. We don't need that anymore. That was just in case I messed up. Oops. Now, see, well, watch this. If you make a mistake, oh, no. So you take two fingers, you touch the screen. Each time you touch it, it'll get rid of a stroke that you don't want. And if you took something away that you did want, you hit it with three fingers, 
there it puts it back see but we don't want those things okay so this is what we have so far you can already see that this is going to be some kind of a seascape um, my tastes it has to have more than this so let's put let's bring, open the uh, the reference photo again and there it is let's bring it down to the size where we can see it and let's continue okay now what do we have so far we have um, all these different layers everything's here so this particular um, canvas that I set up let me show you the canvas information it has only six layers available because I made it so large I made it large because you can always shrink a digital picture to a smaller size but if you increase a small picture to a large size it's going to pixelate it and some some of the paintings you do you're going to want to have printed like on a canvas and a large canvas is just not going to look good if you started small and enlarged it so try to keep that in mind when you're when you're doing one of these so i have only six available and i've used four already and so because of that i want to i don't need to change anything i see pretty much what i want to see here now these islands or these little rocks in the water they're not there yet because i didn't want to put them in until after the water was done and i'm not done with the water but what i do want to do is i want to now merge all three layers together watch what happens when i remove the under layer ah look at that now you can see how the under layer really does make a difference you don't have to do an under layer it's it is by preference however it does give this really cool look and so in today's lesson i'm using it all right so what i just did is i merged all the layers we had we had three we made it into one so now we can turn it off and on and now we're going to add a layer on top of those merged layers okay all right now let's make the picture bigger and let's grab some of these colors here and i think we're probably going to have to refine the uh the way that that distant mountain looks it looks very different than the one we have so i will do that in a moment first i'm going to take the picture make it bigger and i'm going to take this color off of that reference photo and i'm going to start putting it in there i'm trying to be very careful not to mess with my horizon okay right here it's a little bit more of a blue green in this part of the picture up here it's very dark it's a very dark um, blue and it's also rippled so we're going to take care of that okay i think i may have put those rocks too or those yeah those rocks too high in the picture yeah because i'm recording this um i am holding my my pencil a little bit on an angle to make it it's a little bit awkward for me but i just want to show you all right let's go back to this the color of the cove where the water's a little bit thinner a little bit shallower okay yeah this is in california i'm speaking to you from florida and we have this blue green water off the coast of south florida it's beautiful and that's what that looks like right there it looks like that same kind of effect so okay now i, I sort of kind of gave the illusion of some ripples right there I'm not worried about it being perfect up here we have some dark area around some of these uh, rocky areas up here so I'm going to try to make it a little bit darker and there's some whites over there it looks like perhaps there are some waves leaving some Some white in the picture okay 
Now let's go back to this this curve right here. This reminds me so much of when I was out in California. It's probably why I chose to do this picture. I wasn't in this area, I was in LA, but or Santa Monica specifically. It was just such a nice place to be. Okay. All right, now let's fix that shape of that distant mountain. It's a little bit too we want to get the color that we put in the sky. We didn't exactly copy the color. So just and then the mountain itself looks like it uh, comes up a bit and then and then back down. And it's got some areas here that are a little bit darker than others. There are also some oranges in there that I want to make sure I don't forget to put in there. But we'll do that when we get... After a while, we won't use the reference photo anymore. We're going to use our artistic license <laughs> to change some things. Okay. Let's make some, some of these trees a little bit more defined. Light green areas. Some of this, this these browns. Let's make it less opaque. Let's grab some of this colors for these rocks here. dark areas make it a little bit smaller and a little bit more opaque try to get some of those details in there I'm gonna try to uh, right there right by the beach that that light light blue color I'm gonna put that in there Just a little bit beautiful color. Okay, get different parts of the ocean, different parts of the background mountains. Okay, I want to just get it all set up before we do those rocks. And once again, we get here, we got some of these dark areas that I didn't quite get right. Let's work on these rocks. So what I want to do is make a separate layer. So, so here's what this top layer did. Watch when you take the top layer away. You see how it changes it? How the picture has improved from the extra work we put into it? I'm going to combine the two though. See there's with it and there's without it. I'm going to combine the two and make a new layer. Now that new layer is going to be for these rocks here. So they are sort of kind of white. We might change them. It looks like they come around from here to there. So let's just measure. It looks like from there to there. Okay, we're just going to move, sketch them in white, and we'll add the dark colors. Okay, there looks like there's that first rock. And here's. There's the second rock. So looks like that. And it's got some dark areas here. Okay. And then there's also some 
white areas. I'm going to just go for the white up here around the rocks. It looks like perhaps it's where the, the waves are are breaking against the rock, leaving some white. And in fact, there's a little bit of that happening. I'm going to reduce the opacity. There's some of that happening over here along these rocks. There's a little bit happening here. And if there isn't, we're going to paint it in as if there is. Okay. Again, we're not trying to duplicate the picture. We're not trying to create a photograph. We're trying to create a painting, a digital painting. All right, so before I... Let's get some more of this white here. That must be the, the waves breaking up against the beach there. Um, let's take this sky here and pull it up a little bit. I'm going to kind of blend the sky down below the horizon. But a very, it's only because I, I feel like the amount of blur that we used when we used Gaussian blur uh, didn't quite do it. In traditional art, this is how you would how you would do this, by the way. You would paint over it a little bit, or it's one way anyway. Paint over some of the uh, distant areas to give them the, the perception of, of distance. Okay, now I think I understand what everything is, the mountains and um, the sky and the rocks. So now let's do this. We can always put it back on. Let's turn off the reference photo. Let's make the picture the whole screen. And you can see it's very, very brush strokey. Okay, it's a little too brush strokey for my taste. So what we want to do, is we want to take this. And here's the layer I just made with all those little white areas in the rocks. Now we're going to combine the two together again. So again, we have one layer. Um, let's see. Uh, add another layer. Okay, we just added another layer. Sorry, I was looking at something. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to make this look better. Okay, so one of the things I noticed was that there was some sunlight hitting some of these distance mountains and some of these close mountains. So let's try something here. Let's go for an orange-ish color. Now let's let's try to paint some orange onto the sides here as if the sun is hitting these areas even the distant distant one what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it bigger so that i can see it better so you see the sun seems to be hitting this distant mountain Do the same thing over here, some of these rocks, some of these sides. Okay. Look at these. So we're adding a little bit of orange. We're going to do it to these rocks too, because they obviously would be affected also. If the sun was doing this to the rocks on the beach, it would also be doing it to the rocks off the beach. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? Adding that little bit of orange to create a glow. What's happening here? Sun is hitting everything. 
Um, I'm not really happy with this area back here. So let's go ahead and fix some of that. Let's grab some of the colors and make the brush a little bit bigger, a little bit more opaque. Okay. So we have that. Let's fix the sky a little bit. It's a little bit wonky, a little bit wonky. Okay, so that's that layer. Let's see what it looks like without that layer. Without it and with it. So you see what happens. It looks like the sun is <laughs> blinking on, on the earth. Okay. Okay. So now I, I don't want to, I don't think I need to keep that as a separate layer. So again, I'm going to combine the two layers, merge them together. All right, now let's take some of these areas, make another layer. The other layer is always because I don't want to mess up what I have already. Some of these edges, you see, I didn't quite paint to the edge. So let's use this smudging tool. Let's set it to the same setting as the brush, which is turpentine. Let's push some of these pixels over to the edge of the painting so that we get everything. Oh, got to put it on the right layer first, kids. Okay, there we go. See now, see what it's doing? It's pushing it off to the edge. Okay. And same thing over here. Just to bring it to the edge. Okay. And I did make a mistake over here. See that little that little glitch there's a mistake see right there so I can erase that here's the eraser let's set the eraser to turpentine just so it matches the brush and whoops what did I do oh I, I erased the, the layer we're working on let's get rid of that let's go to the right layer and erase that there now it's all gone okay we have now a sketch. It's an impressionistic sketch. So now we have to take it a, another step. We got to make it a little bit, a little bit nicer, looking a little bit more like a finished painting. Um, I. It's it's always a little bit reluctant on my part to do it without the reference photo. However, I think I'm going to do it without it. Okay, so let's go to that separate layer that we already made and let's start fixing little areas like right here let's just take that make a brush make a little bit more opaque now this is the foreground so in the foreground you know what you're going to have you're going to have some evidence of of grass so let's go ahead and put some some little swishes little thin swishes of grass that's coming up just just showing up they're not always going to be dark they're not always going to be green um, just little swishes that are in the foreground that represent grass or, or weeds or something growing in in the the foreground uh, it looks a mess right now but that's okay we're gonna fix that now let's take a couple of light colors and do the same thing let's lower the opacity it's a little bit too bright Put some over here up against these dark areas. All right, now let's take the color of the the area that we've established already, and uh, it's, it's 
So let's make it a little bit more on the orange side. Can't make it look bigger. Okay, get some darker areas. make these trees more defined. And the trees are going to have, the, the sunlight on the trees is going to change them a little bit also, so let's First, put them in dark. They look to me to be pine trees, so we'll make them all have that pine tree look to them. Okay, I'm gonna fix some of these areas. And these are divots in the ground and the dirt and the rocks, just little areas that are not un that are not even, and they're all in the foreground, so they're rather stark in contrast to everything else. Okay, so I had some browns and orange. Give it a sense that there's some dirt in there. All right, now let's take the green from the tree that we did and uh, give it a little bit more like there's light hitting the sides of the trees. Okay. The light coming in. From the west must be must be sunset time. Now let's put a little bit more orange to the to the rocks too, I think. I'm gonna have to darken it too. Another thing that would probably be happening, you'd probably have some kind of reflection in the water from these rocks. So let's go put that in there. Same thing over here. So let's add a little bit more. Let's turn this on and off just to show you. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure if the video is accurately recreating the colors. Um, let's go back to this. I'm not so happy with this here. So let's take that blurring, that blending stump and first let's put all the layers together so we have one layer and i'm gonna whoops that's too much let me do it less yeah blend some of that together yeah make the sky a little bit more blended the ocean a little bit more blended foreground and do the same thing.
what I'm literally doing is moving pixels around in real paint, in traditional paint. You could do it with oils and you could do it with acrylics um, if you were using some kind of a retardant to slow down the, the drying process. But with digital, it's all it's all there. Okay, let's um, use a digital trick. The digital trick I want to use. I'm going to create a layer. And that layer is going to be set to multiply. There's the multiply right there. So now the whole layer is considered multiply. I'm going to use a, a color like this right here. And what I'm going to do, there's that color right there. I want to drag it into the whole picture. Watch what happens. It just made the whole picture darker. Turn off. It's brighter. Turn on. It's darker. Now what I want to do is I want to take the eraser, make sure it's set to turpentine, and I'm going to paint in the eraser marks to, to brighten up the things that should be brightened up, like the sky. Okay, and, and the edges where the light is hitting, the edges of the trees, the edges of those rocks. Okay, that distant mountain is probably lit pretty well. Everything facing the sun is going to be lit. Nothing blocking the sun from the ocean, so that's going to be lit too. I could, again, I could use a large brush, but I want to keep it small to keep the painting looking like a painting. stroke and brighten up the ocean brighten up the sky yeah, okay I'm kind of rubbing it in for the sake of time at the edges of those trees. The sun is hitting right here on this foreground area. It looks like it might be a dirt path or something. Make sure we get rid of the stuff on the edges. All right, now let's turn it on and off so you can see the difference. You can see the effect that we just did. All right, ready? Let's turn off and on the multiply layer. See how it gets a little bit darker? A little bit more shaded, a little bit more orange, too. Um, one thing you can do with this, you can, uh, you can make the whole layer um, darker if you want to. You see how that looks a little darker? I think I like it like that. Just a little darker. Okay. 
And that's the multiply layer with and without. With and without. So now let's combine the two so that again we have one layer. There's one layer. Um, it's very impressionistic. I'm not just sure if I want to keep it like this or not. Let me do one more layer. Just because I feel like I want to create a little bit more uh, c color differences in the ocean. So let's make it a little bit darker in the distance. Let's put some dark areas. Keep the opacity low. Because it's the deepest part of the ocean. Should have the deepest blues. But don't forget some of that background color that we laid down in the very beginning is showing through and that's that's an effect that for this particular painting I wanted. Okay. area here it's a little bit too sharp Gotta open up the right layer <laughs> okay and I want to add some a little bit more of these little dark areas Now keep in mind, I'm using one brush. There are other brushes, obviously, that Procreate gives you. I could probably show you how to use some of them right now. But I, I like the idea of painting digitally and making it look uh, like traditional art. Kind of like that idea. mountain a little less affected by the orange glow. I thought I'd like that idea at first, but now I'm starting to question the decision. Again, I'm doing this on a separate layer, so if I make a mistake, I can always undo everything, everything on that layer anyway. And again, let's take uh, the two layers and merge them together. Watch the difference. See, see the little changes that happened? It just made it a little bit more detailed. And again, I'm going to take the smudging tool or the blending tool and push some of these pixels toward the edge just to kind of fill in the, the gaps. You can also use the blending tool to create that that look of some grass in the, in the foreground. Okay, I think we're going to call this done, except for one thing. 
what I want to do, I want to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to merge the two together. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. The reason I did that was to enrich all the colors. The reason I'm doing this, I have point, I had, I had pause because I might have another idea. Actually, I'm going to duplicate it twice because I'm going to do two different ideas. All right, I'm going to turn off all. But the one, the first idea I have is to use the curve. Um, where is it? Curve. Curves. Okay. Use this graph here. Let's use the gamma and let's see what happens. It brightens it a little bit. Let's compare it. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just a little bit brighter with that. Let's see if we want to, okay, let's, so let's keep that the, that way. And let's do it again. Let's open up curves. Let's try the red, see if the red makes a difference. Ooh, kind of like that. Let's try the green. No, I don't like that. Undo that. How about the blue? A little bit. Now let's try to compare. Yeah, it's just a little bit, a little bit more of a glow. So yeah, let's keep that. Okay, we're going to keep that. Now the other idea I have with the other layer, and I might come back and do it on this layer. But now here's the two layers. Compare that one to that one. You see it's slightly brighter. Okay, now I'm going to take this one. Uh, no, I'm not going to do this. I think it looks painterly enough. So I was going to try to make it look more painterly. Let me show you. Use this and then uh, maybe the dry brush. And just kind of drag it across it. Let's see if it ruins it or not. Okay. Oops, open layers. <laughs> I was on the wrong layer. Okay. Just drag some of these things, some of these pixels around and maybe undo that one. Just I don't know, it makes it look a little more painterly, I guess. Some of those strokes. Well, let's compare the two of them now. I'm not so sure I like them in the in the distance, but I like them in the foreground. All right, so that was my test. So let's get rid of the test. Just delete that. Open up the layer I do like, and we're gonna duplicate it again in case I mess it up bad. And let's try that same thing with the one I do like. Adding some of those little, those little things, little swishes of, like the paintbrush was, was being very, <laughs> very, uh, very messy, but very painterly. Especially here, because it kind of looks like grass, doesn't it? Yeah, so it does. Now, what do you think about that? If I turn off, compare the two. Okay, I like some, I don't like others. I like the foreground. So what I'm gonna do I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't erase them. 
You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to get rid of the one I don't like. I'm going to duplicate the one I do like. And one more time, let's do this. But this time, let's keep all those little strokes right here in the foreground. Okay. Okay, now let's compare that to the one I already like. Yeah, I think I like that. A little, little few wisps that pop up. Okay, so now let's combine that one with the bottom one and that one with the very bottom one. There. Okay, I think we're going to call that done. Um, Thank you for watching. There's the Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park McQuay Rocks off the Pacific Coast Highway in uh, Big Sur State Park in Big Sur, California. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial, the demonstration for Procreate. All right, I'll put this uh, painting on my, my Pixels site if you want a copy of it. And uh, see you next time. Thank you for watching.